Hello everybody, um, here with um, one more example of uh, two degree of freedom system as you could see here. As it relates to modeling of a suspension system of an automobile. So this is a very basic modeling of the suspension system. Of course the suspension system of a car has both springs and uh, damper here, right? But we are just going to consider only uh, the spring here in the front tire and the, uh, the rear tire attaching to the, uh, the chassis of the car. And um, basically, uh, if you include the dampers, uh, you would, the, the approach is pretty much the same. Anyway, so in this problem, we are given the mass of this uh, uh, automobile. The mass moment of inertia is given. This is mass moment of inertia with respect to the axis which passes through actually the center of grav uh, through the axis going through the center of gravity, which would be this point here, point G, C G. Okay, uh, the length to the front of the car from the center of gravity is given to be 1 and 1 1.5 for L2 for L1 and L2 also the the front uh, stiffness is 18,000 newtons per meter and the back spring has a stiffness of 22,000 newtons per meter so these are kilonewtons okay so we want to get the differential equation by the way there are we're going to use uh, x and theta to describe the motion of this guy. So what is happening here, this guy is going to translate down uh, the, uh, the center of gravity by x. And at the same time, he's going to rotate with angle theta. So those are the two coordinates that we're going to uh, use. So come up with the differential equation or system of differential equations for this system. So let me show you um, what I'm going to do. But let me just uh, mention that actually the objective here is to find natural frequencies like any two, uh, multi-degree freedom system or in particular two-degree freedom system. Find uh, natural frequencies and also the mode shapes corresponding to those frequencies. Okay, so this is how we're going to start. You see, if this is our reference line, right? So we said that the... Uh, the center of gravity is going to go down by x and then right there is going to rotate by angle theta. So what will happen is that this is how much the spring delta 1 is how much spring 1 front spring is going to uh, get compressed and similarly delta 2 is how much a spring number 2 is going to get compressed. So now we know that for small angles right small angle theta let me just remove this uh, this uh, portion is from here to here is going to be l2 theta and this is going to be uh, this is going to be l1 theta so therefore delta 1 becomes x delta 1 becomes x minus this l1 theta and then similarly delta 2 is the amount of uh, the formation of a spring 2 would be actually x plus, of, uh, plus l2 theta. All right. Um, now, once you figure out those deformation, you come here and you draw the free body diagram. Remember that gra the weight of this guy is going to be a wash as you have seen in the past because you, you assume that the system already has settled along some you know static equilibrium and then you start disturbing the system so this is the force of the spring in the front and this is the force of the spring in the back k times the corresponding deformation so the two equations here that we have to consider, one is the translation of the center of gravity, right? F equal ma, 
if we pick the direction of disturbance downward as positive, we have a negative force here and a negative force here, right? And then equal to mass times acceleration. The other equation, of course, is due to rotation of the center of gravity. Okay, so we have sum of the moment about G is equal to, well, by the way, this one is J sub O is J sub G also. So you can call it J sub G. Anyways, here they call it J sub O in the picture. By the way, this is just a picture in your textbook that I just copied. Anyways, J sub G or J sub O doesn't matter. Uh, just be careful as you take moment. So the moment of this force going clockwise, it's going to be neg uh, positive. So that would be K1 delta 1 times L1 cosine theta. Uh, and remember that theta, cosine theta for a small angle is equal to 1, as you could see it here, right? So eventually this becomes 1. And similarly, the moment of this guy, K2 uh, delta 2 times this distance about G, which is L2 cosine theta, cosine theta again is 1, equal J sub O or J bar O times alpha. Alpha is theta double. Delta. Let's move to the next page. Plug in for delta 1 and delta 2 here, right? Same thing here, delta 1 and delta 2. And clean this up and group them together. So our differential equation becomes mx double dot. Bring everything to one side. k1 plus k2x. And then you have this term. Times theta. Then for the rotational uh, equation, we have mass moment of inertia times theta double dot or angular acceleration. You have this guy, uh, which is exactly the same as what you have here because of the symmetry. Remember we talked about the matrix, the, the K matrix and mass matrix, they have to be symmetric. And you can see it in a minute down here. Plus this term times theta. All right, put it in the matrix form. So you have M uh, zero and zero and mass moment of inertia times the acceleration vector, <coughs> excuse me. And that's your mass matrix. And then the K matrix, again, you look at the symmetry. This and this are the same, and that's the way it should be. Times the displacement vector, and the right-hand side, of course, zero. So again, what you have is uh, two equations, uh, system of linear differential equations, second order because we have the second derivative, and they are homogeneous because the right-hand side is equal to zero. All right, so now go ahead and plug in the numbers that we had here these numbers that we have here, right? Do that. And you end up getting this equation again. Notice the symmetry. This is the mass matrix. This is the K matrix. Now, you guys remember from before that in order to find natural frequencies, we have to set the determinant of minus M omega squared plus K equal to zero. So if you go ahead and using the mass matrix and uh, K matrix, all you have to do is to multiply this by minus omega squared and add it to 40,000. So we get minus 1,000 omega squared plus 40,000 for the first step, as you could see here. And then similarly, the same thing. Go ahead and do the determinant. This term times this term minus the product of these two. After you simplify it and you divide by some numbers, right? to make it, uh, I think you divide by a thousand or something like that. Uh, you get a quadratic, you get a fourth order polynomial, which can be treated as a quadratic, by the way, because this could be thought of omega squared squared in a way. Clearly, you cannot break it into two parentheses. That's not possible. So you have to use quadratic formula and get the two omega uh, 1 is squared. So omega 1 is squared, the, the lower one, remember, is uh, labeled as 1, and the larger one is labeled as 2. There are 34.33, these are the squared. So when you take the square root, the actual natural frequencies are as follows. So these are the two frequencies, which are also known as what? Eigenvalues, remember? In the other videos, we talked about these eigenvalues. Now, you guys also know how to handle 
how to get the um, uh, eigenvectors or mode shapes. So first, the, for the first mode shape, you plug in the frequency, or in this case, omega 1 is squared here. So if you put omega 1 is squared here, so you put 34, Point thirty four here and then thirty four point thirty four here, right? And clean it up, you'll get this, right? And then times u one one u one two equals zero. Uh, just go ahead, write the equation. Set u one one equal one and get the ratio of it. Now it turns out that if you set u one one equal to one, u one two becomes negative point three seven eight, which is the first mode shape or one of the eigenvectors. So remember, together, u1 and u2, right, are, the, are called eigenvectors. Natural frequencies are called eigenvalues. Okay, so this is out of phase, guys, because you have one positive, one negative. Similarly, if you plug in omega2, this guy, into here and here and get the same type of equations and set u so this is actually uh, your u21 and u22, by the way, if you want to, you know, label it like that. Uh, you end up getting, if you set u21 equal to 1, u22 is 3.2, almost 3.27 times that. So remember, these just show you the ratio. Now, what does that mean in terms of... Um, frequency so if you use this first mode shape as your as your initial condition so for example if you go back to our picture here remember that was what one and negative point three two seven i believe let me just check negative point three seven seven okay that was our u1 so what does that mean remember this corresponds to x and this corresponds to theta so that means that if you, let me erase this, if you uh, move this guy one unit, right, x one unit, and then uh, rotate this guy in the opposite direction, you see this is a positive x, positive theta was like that, so now you have to rotate this, what? 0.377, by the way, the unit of this guy is in meters, the unit of this guy is in radians, so you have to be careful, one is x, one is theta. But in the opposite direction, and then let it go, what will happen? The system will only oscillate in the first frequency, which was 5.86 here. So that's what it means. And then, of course, if you do the second mode shape, then the other frequency is gone and it will uh, oscillate at frequency number two. So I think by now you have a pretty good idea how to handle these problems. Of course, our discussion is only limited to mass spring and then the eigenvalue eigenvectors really work out nicely for these problems. Even though if you add a uh, damper here, you could get a differential equation that involves also x dot and theta dot. And you would have, again, system of differential equations, but it would be a little bit different, you know, the approach. Okay? As always, thanks for watching and listening. And we're getting close to the end of the semester, so maybe a couple of more videos and we are done. Thank you.